Well, good evening. Uh, I really can't believe that I'm actually here, um, finally. Um, I, I, flew this, uh, I flew this banner for the high school. Let's see. So I flew this banner. This banner was with me on my first mission back in May of 2009. So it went to the uh, Hubble Space Telescope with me on board the uh, shuttle Atlantis. And I've been trying to get back here ever since to, uh, to give it back to the high school. Um, the good news is that I uh, got reassigned right away and uh, flew another mission in uh, May of 2010, like uh, Ben just said. And um, so landed just landed in, uh, at the end of May, and this was really the first chance I had to get back to the, uh, while the kids were in school. And so I was uh, here this morning and did a couple of assemblies to the whole school, gave the uh, banner back to the school, and uh, so that's one more thing off my list. Um, let's see. Um, a big thanks to uh, Kevin, my brother Kevin. He pretty much uh, coordinated all this stuff uh, to get me here to the high school. Uh, the stuff with the banner, he coordinated with NASA to get me here, so I really appreciate it. And it just happens that it's his, uh, it's his birthday today. <laughs> so I don't, we don't have to sing happy birthday or anything, but uh, I just wanted to show you what it was like to uh, grow up with Kevin. You know, he's here hitting, hitting the ball in the back here and there, so. Good job, Kevin. Happy birthday. <clears throat> well, it's, it's such an honor to have the opportunity to speak to you all about flying in space. This was my dream, to become an astronaut, launch into space on the space shuttle, and get to go explore our universe. Here's the secret, though, that all this space stuff is just to get your attention and interest. The real message is, no dream is impossible. So while I'm talking to you about uh, my last two summer vacations to the uh, Hubble Space Telescope and the, uh, and the space station, I want you to be thinking about your dreams and what goals you need to set in order to make those dreams become a reality. Oh, back this way. So for me, both were relatively short trips. I've spent 25 days total in space, uh, but I traveled over 10 million miles and made 383 trips around the Earth. Uh, the journey gets uh, started by getting the vehicle ready. So this is uh, the space shuttle. It gets stacked up in the uh, vertical assembly building. But this is the whole package here. So we have the orbiter, and that's the part that we are, are in up in space and that we bring back and land. And we'll talk about that more later. We got this big orange tank here. That's the uh, external fuel tank. It's basically filled up with uh, liquid oxygen and hydrogen, you know, about minus 400 degrees. So pretty cold stuff in a liquid state. And that's what fuels the, uh, the three main engines of the space shuttle down here on the way to orbit. And then of course we have the two solid rocket motors on the outside, those two white things. And those things really give it a lot of thrust getting off the pad to help us get started. This whole thing is sitting, uh, is attached to this mobile platform here. And so it goes out on this crawler from the vertical assembly building out to the launch pad. And it goes about a mile an hour uh, to get out there. So it's about a six hour uh, trip. Let's see. Here we are. We got uh, all suited up in our orange pressure suits and crew quarters and ride out to the pad in this uh, Astro van. It's a pretty cool ride to go out to the, uh, to the pad. Uh, here I am in the, uh, the white room. This is just outside the, uh, the door or the, uh, the hatch here is right there, that circular thing. That's the side hatch going into the space shuttle. So this is just outside of that. These guys are helping me get on uh, the harness that I'll use to strap into my parachute and my seat. But it's at this point where I really realize that there is no turning back. You know, you've got to, I've got to get in and, and uh, you know, ride this rocket. These guys are helping me, but these two guys are actually just guarding the door so that I can't uh, make, a, make a run for it. So as the countdown reaches zero, the solid rockets light, and those uh, eight bolts uh, explode, and the shuttle's on its way. It's actually a pretty quick ride to orbit. It's only eight and a half minutes. We go from uh, sitting on the pad at zero to 17,500 miles an hour in eight and a half minutes. The engine's cut off then, and we're floating in space. So even though we weigh about four and a half million pounds sitting on that launch pad, we have seven and a half million pounds of thrust. So once those rockets light, you know, I don't know where we're going, but we're definitely going somewhere. 
On flight day three, we finally get our first look at the uh, Hubble Space Telescope. And this, this pitch right here is uh, mainly about Hubble, but I'll have some other pictures from the uh, space station too. And then a little bit later, I'll have a quick movie that's uh, mostly about our second, my second mission. So this is uh, mostly about Hubble. It had been up there for 19 years uh, before we got there. So it was in pretty, pretty good shape. It, was, it looked really big and it looked really beautiful. This thing's about the size of a school bus. It's about uh, 43 feet uh, long. And then this end up here, this uh, lid opens up and that's the, so the light kind of comes in this way and all the science instruments are down here uh, at this end. So we catch up to it and um, Megan reaches out with the robotic arm and uh, which you can just see over here in the picture. She grabbed it, brought it down here into the payload bay and we hooked it onto a ring back there. And so this becomes our garage. This is where we worked on it for the next five days. We did five back-to-back -back, uh, spacewalks on it. So once we had it uh, in the bay, it was really, t you know, it was really time to get to work now. Um, and this is what I had dreamt about, you know, going outside in my spacesuit, floating over to the telescope, grabbing onto it, you know, opening up the doors, actually crawling inside the telescope so that we could get at the science uh, instruments inside there and, uh, and do our work. The meat of our mission was these uh, was the five space to back to back spacewalks, and we had two teams of spacewalkers, so we always go out in pairs. One group did uh, one, three, and five, and then Mike Massimino and I did uh, numbers two and four. Um, some of the work was just scheduled maintenance; we changed out the batteries and the gyros, um, and then some of it was bringing up new equipment. Uh, we brought up a new camera, a new uh, spectrograph, and then we also repaired a broken camera and a broken spectrograph. So by the time we left. It had, Hubble was in the best shape of its life. And hopefully it'll be up there for another five years at least. Um, there's, a, there's no warranty on the labor, just, uh, just on parts. <laughs> so after I got suited up in the airlock and went outside, the first thing I did was climb onto the robotic arm. So this is the end of the robotic arm over here. And it extends out here and there's a, a boot plate here that I could put my feet into so that I could work with the, uh, both my hands, which is uh, really kind of a nice thing. Otherwise, if you're free floating out there, you always want to have to be hanging on with one hand. You always want to be hanging on. This is very important. <laughs> so these are all my tools over here. Um, and you can see then that uh, Megan would fly me back to the telescope. And I've got this big power tool, you know, power tools in space. I mean, is this a great job or what? But uh, I'm back there at the, uh, at the telescope undoing some bolts here on this fixed head star tracker so that we could open up these doors right here and get at the instruments inside. So there it is now with the, uh, the doors open. You're looking right into the belly of the uh, telescope here. These are the fixed head star trackers and then there's three gyros that we were, uh, that was our first task on our, our spacewalk was to re replace these gyros. We replaced all six gyros. There's actually three boxes with uh, two gyros in each box. And these gyros are what allows the Hubble to look and uh, point so accurately. Um, and when you're looking at far away, you know, stars and galaxies, it's really important to have a good pointing mechanism. So to do our work, I, I literally had to stuff my partner, Mike Massimino, inside the telescope. So I'm out here on the, uh, on the robotic arm still. This is me in the, uh, the candy stripe. Uh, anytime you see a guy with a suit with this barber pole kind of thing, that's me. But Mike Massimino is here. He's inside the telescope. So I was kind of working on the outside and he was on the inside as we were trying to uh, replace these uh, instruments. But he had to be really careful in there because we came to fix the telescope, you know, not to break it. So we had to be very careful that, you know, they kept telling us, don't break the telescope. <laughs> After six hours of working to get those new gyros fit into the telescope, we started on our second task, which was to replace a battery. These batteries were originally equipped, so they've been up there for 19 years, charging and discharging. I think you could see uh, earlier on Hubble, they had the solar arrays, but we're going around the Earth once every 90 minutes. So we see a sunrise and a sunset every 90 minutes. So some of the time we're in the light, and then some of the time we're in the darkness. So it uses those solar cells in the daylight, obviously, but then it charges up batteries so at night it can still run the telescope on the, uh, on the dark side of the Earth. So 
You know, Kevin told me, well, big deal, you're changing out batteries, how hard can this be? You know, he's, he's, these are not AA batteries. You know, this, is a, this thing's a 500 pound uh, you know, nickel hydrogen uh, battery. And it's uh, very similar to the ones we swapped, actually swapped six of these out on the, uh, up on the station on my second mission. So all, all these spacewalks uh, really turned out to be nail biters. I mean, there's always something that doesn't go right, uh, sticky bolts, and we had to break off on handrail and stuff. But uh, both of the spacewalks were planned for six and a half hours, but they ended up going almost eight hours. And they were the fifth and eighth longest uh, spacewalks ever. So we were pretty happy that they finally let us back inside. And here's uh, John Grunsfeld. He's opening up this uh, hatch back into the mid-deck. And you can see into the airlock here. It's just a... You know, just a mass of boots and tools and elbows and everything. And eventually I was able to get out of my uh, spacesuit and come back into the uh, space shuttle. And I was pretty, uh, pretty tired and pretty thirsty and pretty hungry, but pretty happy too because we had gotten everything done. So at the end of a long day, it's time to go to bed, and this is how we uh, sleep up on orbit. There's, um, we sleep in these sleeping bags because there's really no up or down up there. So you can tie these sleeping bags off on the wall or on the ceiling or on the floor or really wherever you want to put them. And uh, you can see Mike, there's my partner, Matt Mass is over there. And, uh, he's already asleep, it looks like. He's got his, your arms just kind of float out like this. It's kind of like being in a swimming pool. But uh, there I am in my sleeping bag. We just, uh, you know, tie it off on the wall and then we, you know, we hop in and zip it off, zip it up and you, you literally float off to sleep. You know, we don't need a pillow. Our, our head doesn't weigh anything, so you don't need to lay your, your head on a pillow. So it's really a pretty comfortable way to, uh, to drift off to sleep. It's pretty weird when you wake up, though, in the morning. You know, it's like that first, as you're waking up, it's like, wow, I'm floating. You know? <laughs> so uh, after five days of working on Hubble, it was, uh, it was time to say goodbye. So I actually grappled Hubble with the robotic arm and then uh, Megan lifted it up out of the uh, payload bay. And our commander, Scott Altman, uh, then flew, did a series of small burns to fly the space shuttle away from Hubble, leaving, in its, uh, leaving it in its orbit up 300 nautical miles above the Earth to continue on its journey of discovery. So this was the last uh, sunset that we saw in Hubble. It was probably about 300 uh, meters away from the uh, shuttle at this point. And so I was just taking pictures about this fast. And that was it. That was the last uh, we had ever, we were to see the Hubble, because next time we came around and, and uh, it was, it was far away. <laughs>